talk came out uh, came about because I was trying to because I was trying to solve a problem. I was creating an API, and part of the what the API had to do was to basically s the the the, um, the API had to provide a whole bunch of information, right? So maybe on the order of like half a million records, there was another consumer that had to consume about half a million records, right? So um, this is uh, kind of like where the talk came from, because I ran into some performance issues, right? So um, one of the things that I, that I use is I use uh, SQLize, it's an ORM. I mean, if, uh, are you guys familiar with uh, SQLize and ORMs in general? This is for Node.js's backend, right? Okay, so ORM is an object relational man, uh, mapper, and basically what it does is it helps you to uh, basically access relational databases. Right, so <clears throat> usually if you want to page through a result set from an SQL database, most of the time what people like to do is they like to use the offset method. Right, so basically they set a limit and then they set an offset. So the thing about it is for small result sets, actually that's okay, most of the time it works fine. Okay, but if your result get, set gets larger and larger and larger, what happens is for the first page, they find the first page and then after that they iterate through the first, let's say 10 records. Let's say if you have 10 records per page. Then for the next page, they had to iterate through the first 10 records and then the next 10 records and so on and so forth. So every page that you query further and further down the road takes longer and longer to come back, right? Um, yeah, so basically that's it. Okay, so this is kind of like what happens if you use the offset method versus the seek method. As you can see, the, the more pages you have in your result set, the longer it takes for the offset method to actually return you results. So um, the, the thing about the seek method is it has, it's all basically about using indexes in a database. Right? So um, it's very important. So the, the idea here is to use the index so that you can get directly to the page that you want and it's usually demarcated by some kind of um, some kind of, uh, let's say, unique ID, right? Eventually, the idea here is that you want to preserve the sort order of it so that you can, I can go to this part, and then after that, I can go to this part, and then I can go to this part, right? Um, the thing about it is, because of this, you have to modify the where clause in your SQL, all right? So let's say, for example, you have a where clause with some criteria, you have to add on of more criteria that uses that particular index that you are using to actually segregate your data, right? To, to, to basically maintain the sort order of your data so that you can page to the, to the exact point that you want, okay? So um, some usually we, let's say for example, you have a list of, uh, I don't know, posts, right? And most of the time for the list of posts, you would like to have, uh, you would probably order them by date, or by date and time, right? Of course, some posts may actually have the same date. Let's say if it's post by day, for example. So to maintain the sort order, not only would you use an index that is based on, like for example, the post date and time, but also, um, for example, the primary key. So eventually, so most of the time, you use the primary key plus something else for the sort order. Okay, so. <clears throat> The, the thing about the seek method is for the very first query that you use to enter into the result set, um, basically it's just as per normal. But the only thing that you do do is that, let's say for example, you're, you want to return 10 results, I would add, you would add on one more, right? So that you know there's another page. Okay, the, the thing about the, the seek method is that um, you can sequentially get lots of pages but it's very difficult for you to say, I want page five, and then I want to go to page 10, and something like that. So you go one, two, three, four, five, and, and throughout. Um, so the reason why we add on one more is so that when we, we actually take one more um, record than we need to actually indicate whether there's actually more data that we, we whether there's another page, whether we can page, uh, whether we, there's another page for us to, to, to extract. Okay. So as I mentioned before, the last record is used to determine there's the next page, and then this is how we construct the subsequent queries, right? So if you look at, um, let's say, invoice 11, 
they find there's an invoice date there, and then there's an ID. Uh, that's, that's the primary key. <coughs> so we have to construct the query like this. So for example, you have your where clause, which you have your general search criteria, okay? And then you have to add on this, this portion here, which kind of helps you seek to that middle of the result set. So as you can see, what happens is we select the invoice date of invoice 11, right? And then after that, we have this thing here, okay? <clears throat> that basically says that select, um, don't select anything, don't, don't select anything before that ID, right? So it's, it's to make sure that you don't pick up any records that have the same invoice date as um, invoice 11, all right? Okay, it's kind of technical, sorry. Okay, so, um, okay, so, so back to SQLite. So what I've been talking about here is basically just all SQL, all right? So as I mentioned before, SQLite is a popular um, object relational mapper that, that you know, people like, no, uh, I mean, Node.js people like me like to use, right? Um, and this is how the code would be like, right, if, for example, we are using SQLite. So, for example, we would have the, you know, we would find all, and then you have your where clause, and then, of course, this is how you would code it up using the various operands in SQLite to actually get the, to actually seek into the, the result set that you would require. Okay, so I did some benchmarks, right, between the, uh, um, between the offset method and the seek method, right? And so I'll, I generated like 100,000 randomly generated records, and I kind of took them 100 records at a time on, on, my, on, on a little VM that I had on my machine, right? And so basically this is the kind of the results that I had. So it's, 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 it, I, I didn't expect it to be that, that much better, but it, it, it actually pretty much is. You know, it's almost on the order of I mean, 60 times like. So one of the limitations of using this uh, method, right, is that because you have to add things to the where clause, if you want to change the sort order, you, you basically have to change your where clause, that, that part of the where clause here, right, that allows you to seek into the data. Okay, and as I mentioned before, you can't actually jump to an arbitrary page. So you, you, if you start at page one, you've got to go to page two and page three and page four, right? You can't go to, from page one to page uh, seven or something like that. But it's probably okay if, let's say, for example, you are implementing uh, like a mobile app, right? And then, you know, somebody just scrolling through their posts and all that. So, you know, nobody, they, nobody jumps, right? They, they, you, you just have this infinite scroll and then, you know, the, the mobile app just keeps on querying the API. You can move backwards, but you have to have, you have to construct two queries. You have to basically say, I want, I want to go forward, and then you have to construct a query that goes backwards. It's a kind of complicated, but it's possible. So if you, let's say, for example, you wanted to have like a, you want to go forward and backward, it's possible. Okay, so um, uh, basically I, I got, I, I was doing some research on the internet, and that's how I found it, right? This, this, so, so this guy, uh, he's a database guy, so he kind of like, you know, t um, kind of, you know, gave me some inspiration on how to do this. And uh, I have a gist implementation for the seek method using SQLite. You, you guys, I mean, th th this is available on the Talk.js GitHub, so you can take a look. Alrighty, so, I've come to the end of it, so I just want to... Any questions? Uh, sure. Um, the, the thing that's making the queries, is this from the front end or the back end? This is from the, um, this is from, uh, the back end. So okay. what... So is, it, is, there, sorry, is there a requirement on the back end to be completely stateless? Excuse me? Is there a requirement on the, of the back end to be completely stateless? Is there a requirement? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so you can't do like an initial query that just gets a, a list of all the IDs and then scrolls through that like with a window. 
I mean, you okay. So let's say, for example, you want to get a list of all IDs, but then you have to get like you have to you still have to you still have to suck that all down. So that's that's quite quite significant. It it all depends on where how much information there is there, how many IDs you have. So like I said, this one has like five hundred thousand. You know, the, the the result set that I have is about five hundred thousand. That we, I mean, we need to page through. So um, even if we suck all of that down at once, I think it's a it's a bit well, much. I was referring to just the IDs. Oh, just, yeah, just the IDs. I mean, even even then, I, would you really want to have all the IDs there? Because what happens is once you do a query, you get all the IDs. Let's say, for example, somebody's adding something to the end of, of, of the result set, right? Then you, you'd only have those IDs, right? So let's say, for example, you, you get like 3,000 3, IDs. Somebody's adding on, somebody's inserting a few more records into it, then you'd still you, 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 need, you need to find a way to actually get those, those IDs, right? Those, those, those IDs that people have inserted inside. Yep. Uh, the time... Thank you. The time you saved, um, like performance-wise, uh, how much time did it cost you development-wise? And especially, this is a simple query, but once you start having like, filters, how complex can it get? Is it like really something you recommend to everyone or only for certain use cases? I think that if you require, let's say if you need to, let, if you are going to do a query, right, and then you're only going to look for maybe the, the first hundred or first thousand records. So every time you do a search, let's say you're doing a search and you're doing a query, first hundred thousand, uh, first hundred records, then you, you don't need to do this, right? But let's say, for example, you, you, wanna, you want to feed information, right? I, I need to query something and I know the result set is going to be quite, quite large, then you would want to do something like this. But as, 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 as Brandon, right? As Brandon mentioned, I mean, it, it, it has to be, it, the, the requirement was for it to be stateless. Oh, anyway, thanks for all the questions. Any other questions? Have you considered using uh, different data lights that might support uh, the queries in a different fashion? For example, like a, a time series data lights? Um, what happens is, uh, yes, I mean, there, there are always different ways, different ways that you can use other kinds of databases, right? So, for example, um, I mean, if, if, let's say, for example, for search. So, if some, you can use normal SQL queries to give you search or you can throw everything into a Elasticsearch, for example, right? But, you know, this Elasticsearch is kind of big, needs a machine, all that kind of thing. So, um, I think the, 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 we, didn't want to, we didn't want to complicate the stack any more than we had to by having like different databases because you still have to meld everything together anyway. And so that's why we, we used, we used this, this, this method. Any other questions? Oh, one more. Yeah, I think um, for this problem, it's actually solved by SQLite if you use the find and count all function. Ah, okay, so yeah. that so the, the find and count all function is is literally your offset. If you, if you if you have the find and count all, that uses offset method. Yeah, and then if you declare your convoluted indexes or multiple columns, then you would guarantee that it could stick to um, the right place immediately and your code could be very simple. I've written the, the usual way in a sense. You don't have to uh, muck around and um, in the complicated conditions, right? Because um, you, you, using that function, you have the entire count of the result set and you also get the records that you need. So you just compare the sum of um, the return results and the amount skipped versus the total number of records that, um, that actually match your filter. You would know whether or not you need to do anything. Does that make sense? That means if you offset x and y, but you know that your total condition returns that if x and y um, exceed that, um, sorry, if z exceeds x plus y, then you know that you have to continue to paginate. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean you, the, okay, so the thing is this, right, if you have a very large result set, if you do a find and count all, if you do a count all, the count itself takes quite a, quite a while. All right, the count itself probably takes, I mean, depending on how large the result set is, like I said, if the result sets are relatively small, it's, it's not a big deal. But if the result sets are relatively large, right, okay, then it takes a while. Um, as, as you've mentioned, the find and count all 
the find and count all, I, I basically that's what I've used. I use the find and count all to, 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 to do the offset method. And that is what has returned me those kinds of results. So I, I, I guess what I'm saying is that if you have this particular use case, then you know, this is one way to solve that problem. I mean, like I said, there's, there's actually many ways to solve issues. You know, I, I don't think there's ever, ever, always one way to skin a cat, right? But I'm just saying that if you have, if you, have, if, if you are wedded to, let's say, SQL database, you have to put your, you know, for legacy reasons or whatever, then this is this one way to solve the, the issue. I think like if you just have the right complete index um, in the right order that matches your query, I think even the count could be really quick. Yeah, but we can take this offline. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Oh yes. Uh, uh, just a quick point actually. Uh, is this uh, how is it different with cursor? Oh, um, it's, it's, it's nothing to do with cursor because as, as Brandon has mentioned, it's a stateless thing, right? So the thing is you could, you could actually if you wanted to, like you said, you can use a cursor. One of the reasons why we may not want to use a cursor is that you, when you do the cursor query, you tie up, you, you, can, you can tie up all the records. I mean, they may lock, the, they may lock various records or, or, you know. So if you have a lot of, of results to actually pass, right, then what would happen is um, some other function or some other process may want to write to a record which you have locked up with your cursor and then after you get a database lock, right. Uh, what happens when uh, more data comes in and you need to insert rows in between? Assuming, I think it works well when you keep adding rows to the end of the table. But what happens if you want to insert like between 4 and 5, index 4 and 5? Do you keep reindexing the ID on over and over again? Or? Okay, so for example, usually we try to make use of, for, for the maintaining the sort order, we try to make use of IDs that don't change, right? So let's say, for example, if so, so that's why the, uh, the 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 primary key is usually an ID that we use to to help to maintain maintain sort order in addition to whatever other sort criteria we would like to have, right? But I mean, I get your point. So what happens is, let's say, for example, we are sorting on some date. What happens if somebody adds on a date that's in the past that we've already gone past? Well, it's then it's in the past. Then it's kind of then we, you won't pick it up until until you if, unless you go through the entire process again. Yes, sir. All right, thank you guys. Yes.